Though I couldn't have known it at the time, God was calling me to sacrifice something that stood in the way of my relationship to Him. It was hard and slow, but over the next two years I developed solid friendships that were real and true. Before finishing my sophomore year, I experienced the transforming power of God's grace in conversion. Within the next year, I experienced a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit in a personal and life-changing way. As a result, I acquired an insatiable hunger for Scripture. I fell head over heels in love with the Word of God, the inerrant, infallible guide to our life as Christians and with the study of theology. I devoted the last two years of high school to playing the guitar and studying Scripture. Jack and his friend, Art, taught me Scripture. Art even brought me along to some of his seminary classes with Dr. John Gershner in my senior year. I decided the figures in Christian history who most appealed to me and the ones Jack and Art were always talking about were the great Protestant reformers, Martin Luther and John Calvin. I first studied how Martin Luther rediscovered the gospel, or so I thought, completely separating himself from the Catholic Church. I began to devour his works. As a consequence, I became very strong in my anti-Catholic convictions. I was so firmly convinced that for Miss Dangler's English class in high school, I decided to write my senior research paper on Luther's views. As a result, I had a mission to correct and to liberate Catholics bound up with unbiblical works righteousness legalism. Luther had convinced me that Catholics believed they were saved by their works, but that the Bible taught justification by faith alone, or sola fide. Luther once declared from the pulpit that he could commit adultery 100 times in a day, and it would not affect his justification before God. Obviously, this was rhetorical, but it made an impact on me, and I shared it with a lot of my Catholic friends.